Welcome back to the Bench Boys Podcast, episode number 17. My name is Lamar, and I am once again joined, as always, by my co-host, Zach. How are you Most doing? Are you finally going to shut up? who knows MLB. He never sees red. I really don't. I only see green. It's a problem. <laughs> it really is. Very much so. The only green he doesn't see is money. But let's go ahead and get into this. We hey, you know are what? doing our... <laughs> I see green based off our leg- our, our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. They let no. me see a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We are not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, but we would take a sponsorship. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get into this. The way we're going to do this is we're going to give our uh, standing predictions uh, by division. Uh, we're going to give record predictions as well, going from first all the way down to fifth, or maybe fifth, no, fifth all the way down to up, all the way up to first, excuse me. And then once we finish our standings, then we'll go to the playoffs, do our playoff predictions. And then some awards at the end. So, I'll go first. We're going to be starting in the AL East. Uh, fifth place, I have the Red Sox at 72 and 90. Uh, I just don't see much with this team. I don't think they're that great. And they're also in a really good division. I think it's going to be tough to win. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm with you on that with the Red Sox. I have them going 75 and 87. If they were in, in the Central, I mean, maybe they have a shot to win this division, but the AL East, I feel, is going to be competitive all year long. Um, they do have some younger players who I'm excited to see, like Vaughn Grissom. I'm ready to see if – who's the first baseman they called up? I forgot his name. Casas? Yeah, but Casas was there last year. So I'm ready to see, like, what he does in year two. Um. I do feel this is a team who will move off of some people at deadline for prospects. Um, okay. I think they should have done more in free agency, but overall, I think they're a last place team in this division, considering how competitive it will be. All right, you want to go ahead and do number four? We'll switch back and forth. Yeah, sure. Fourth place, I have the Toronto Blue Jays at 88 and 74. I just feel like they didn't do enough this offseason to compete with the with the rest of the division. Um, they kind of stayed pat and kind of all, went all in for Shohei and they didn't get them. Um, I still think they'll be a good team. They'll be a playoff. They were a playoff team from last year, but I don't, I think they'll honestly not be as great as they were and falling forth. I have the Tampa Bay Rays at fourth. What record did you have the Blue Jays at? I'm sorry. Uh, 88 and 74. Oh, <laughs> so finish it fourth and going 88 and 74. That's wild. Uh, I've got the Rays. I've got them at 78 and 84. It's a big dip from the Rays. I understand that. But I do not think they're going to really recover this year from missing Wander Franco. Now, that is not their fault at all. It is just in no way their fault, but it is an unfortunate problem to have. Wanda Franco was their best player. They also did trade Tyler Glass now. And I do know that they are good at putting other guys back, you know, finding guys, just throwing them into that spot and just building them up to be that good. I just I think this year they're not they don't have enough to do that. And I expect a dip in what they are used to being. And then for third place, I have the Toronto Blue Jays at 86 and 76. I agree with you about not doing enough. It did feel like they were going all in for Shoei. And even if they get, did get Shoei, it sounded like they were going to trade Vladdy or Bo Bichette or both. Uh, I really don't understand what the team's motives are. Like, what do they want out of this club? Because right now all they're doing is getting older at this point. They have some promising people. Uh, David Schneider had a really good end to the season last year. And then, of course, Boba Shep was a really good player last year. But uh, Vladdy, if he doesn't bounce back and look like more of the 2021 self, and if he continues to regress because he has been regressing the last three years, then I don't think they have any sort of chance to make any sort of statement 
or even make the playoffs. Yes, 100% valid. Um, I do think this is a last effort year for the Blue Jays because I don't think they're going to pay Bebeshet and Vladdy too. So this does kind of feel like a last ditch effort kind of year for them. Um, yeah. Third place, I have the New York Yankees at 91 and 71. I do have them taking the last wild card spot. Um, if you look at pitching wise, that does concern me, especially with the injury to Garrett Cole. Um, he's not going to be out the full year, but Yankees are going to have to figure it out. They did sign Stroman, which he was good the first half last year. Don't know if he can keep up a full year again, but he should be decent for him. I do think they'll go out and get either Snell or Montgomery, mainly because I do think – I don't think they're going to sign before the season. Let me go ahead and clarify that, which is insane to me. But I do think the Yankees will end up getting one of them because they, they need another arm in that rotation, I feel. Um, I don't think Juan Soto is going to have MVP caliber numbers because I think he's going to get extremely pull happy with that short porch in Yankee Stadium. Um, but I do have them barely sneaking in the playoffs at 91-71, but I am kind of cautious to put them in there with the injury to Cole, the call, with Cole, and I don't think you're getting Judge a full 162. You're probably getting them 130-140. Well, who is your second place? Uh, my second place team is the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, I've doubted in the past two years, and I've gone and won 90-plus games and made the playoffs. I have them at 95 and 67 because I I don't know who's pitching in that rotation, but they're probably going to be good. They're probably going to have a side young candidate knowing them, and I'm just not going to doubt them this year. That's my logic for it. For the second place in the uh, AL East and my first wild card spot, so fourth overall, I have the New York Yankees at 99 and 63. Uh, I'm a big believer in what they've got this year. I think that lineup is going to be tremendous. Uh, Eve, I don't think Juan Soto is going to get pulled happy. I think he's a talented enough hitter, a disciplined enough hitter to not do that. Having Judge is going to be huge. They have a ton of options in that outfield. Uh, another year of Torres, another year of Volpe also doesn't hurt at all. Uh, I think Austin Wells is going to be good at catcher. The rotation, I don't. I have some questions about because if Cole is has a serious injury, then you know might throw everything away. But I think the lineup is good enough in itself. Mm, excuse me, that they'll be able to pretty much carry them to ninety nine wins. And then in first place in the AL East, also at ninety nine and sixty three, I have the Orioles. I think it's going to be a tiebreaker, you know, through head to head competition. Uh... I mean, Baltimore is stacked. And the only thing that I can really say against them is that they're young, and that's not anything you can really do about. Uh, but they are young. Uh, I mean, what do I have to say? Adley Rutschman's one of the best catchers, if not the best catcher in the uh, MLB. They added Corbin Burns. Gunnar Henderson is one of the best infielders. It's a great team. And they're so young. They're, the sky's the limit for the team. Okay, I also have the Orioles at the one seed. I forgot to mention, though, the Rays are my second wild card. Um, so with the Orioles, though, I have them at 105 and 57. I know the win total's high, but they won. They were the one seed last year without, like, a true ace. Now they get Corbin Burns and John Means back. I, people don't talk about John Means coming back <laughs> enough, I feel. Um, they've added to that bullpen. Orioles, in my opinion, are will have the best. They're like the Braves in 2019. I kind of feel where like everyone has already broken out from the year before. They're extremely young. They can go out there and get the best record in the AL easy, I feel. Um, and that Burns trade, I know it's only for one year, but man, that was a good trade for them. Mm-hmm. All right, well, why don't you, we're going to go to the AL Central now. Why don't you give us your fifth place team? No surprise, the Chicago White Sox right here. Um, there's not a lot there. I have them at 62 and 100. That 62 number kind of worries me. I feel like they can lose more than that, honestly. I do hope Mike Soroka bounces back because big Braves guy. 
But past that, they have nothing to work with. Uh, Bill, you'll start hearing rumors about Luis for a bear around the deadline. I feel like he probably mm-hmm. will be moved for more prospects. They, It's smart for them just to go ahead and tear it down. And they're a fifth place team in this bad division. Yeah, I've also got the uh, the White Sox, sorry. I've got him at 60 and 102. I don't see much at all. Again, we both love Soproka, uh, but I mean, they've got an infield that's consisted of a middle infield, at least with Paul DeJean and Nicky Lopez. And when we start with that, then you've got problems. Luis Rivera is really the only superstar on this team. Uh, they had Dylan Cease, but they trade him. And I that, think that is the right move to do. Uh, and I think it would also be the right move to go ahead and trade uh, Robert. I think it's just worth it at this point. What, you know, why would you keep him? Uh, for the fourth place team at 78 and 84, I have the Detroit Tigers. Now, there are a lot of promising things about this team. I think the one thing that makes me hold up and say, well, maybe not, is some pitching problems and some holes in the lineup, especially at shortstop. I think Javier Baez is a huge negative to have. I mean, they've got guys like Riley Green, they've got guys like Spencer Torkelson that look good, play good, are going to be really good in this league, but Javier Baez is garbage right now. And there is no way around it. There's no other way of saying it. He's bad. Tariq Skubal could possibly win Cy Young. He's that good. But outside of that, they don't really have a ton going for him. Ed- Eduardo Rodriguez, but he went to the D-Bats. There's just not much there. And I, I just don't see it working out for him. Bro, that video of Javi Baez getting struck out by Sister Jeans. Always going to be top tier to me. <laughs> uh, in fourth place, I have the... Kansas City Royals at 70 and 92. It's another retooling year for them, I feel. Um, they're a young team. There are pieces there that are promising. Um, and honestly, in this division, I could, I think the next four teams, anyone but the White Sox, I feel, can win this division. It's so bad. Um, Bobby Wood's a star. Um, I know you're pretty vocal about that contract he has. And how it really doesn't benefit the Royals the way it should. But overall, I think they're a fourth place team. People are going to have to step up big for them to do better, I feel. And in third place, I have the Detroit Tigers at 75 and 87. That hobby contract's bad. Um, I think they're in the same spot the Royals are in. They're not great, but the division's pretty bad. They have a lot of young pieces that are going to have to step up for them to do something more than what I feel they can. But I think it's a coin flip for me for the Royals and Tigers. He's going to finish third and fourth. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my third place, I have the Royals at 82 and 80. I actually think they're going to be pretty good this year. While I have been very vocal about that Bollywood contract, it doesn't really benefit them. In my opinion, I do think he is still a excellent player. I don't hate that they got him. That's not the issue at all. The issue is, you know, maybe that contract's not going to work out too well. Whatever my opinion is, does it matter? The team still has really promising pieces. Vinny Pasquantino, Cole Reagans at the end of the year looks really good. Uh, it, the team has a lot of potential, and I do think this is a year, especially with this division not being too great, I think this is a year that they can take, uh, you know, capitalize on that. Uh, and for second place, I have the Minnesota Twins at 84 and 78. Lots to talk about with the Twins. Pablo Lopez, Carlos Correa, Royce Lewis, well, not Carlos Correa, Royce Lewis, all of those big pluses. The catcher's pretty good. I forgot his name. I think it's Ryan Jeffers. If, if, if yeah. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, he's pretty good. Correa's fine. Uh, but, like, they lost Sonny Gray, and there's no really way to twist that. That's a big hole in that rotation, and maybe it doesn't fill. Maybe it does. I don't know. Joe Ryan also didn't play really good at all last year. He can get better. I believe he will get better, but nah, I, I don't know. I don't know at all. Yeah, and second, I also have the Twins at 86 and 76. Like you said, if they had so many great, I would have them win in this division, but I just don't know who's going to fill that spot in the rotation. 
Um, Royce Lewis, I feel if he could stay healthy, if him and Bucks could stay healthy, maybe they can overcome that offensively. But they just they weren't a good hitting team last year, and that's they made the playoffs, but they didn't do much outside of that Toronto series. So I have them in second place and in first place. In my number three overall seed, I have the Cleveland Guardians at 88 and 74. I do think it's going to be a tighter race between them and the Twins all year. Uh, the difference between them, one, the Guardians pitching a little better, and two, J-Ram's a proven star. You know where you're getting every year, and offensively on the Twins, I don't know who can consistently be a star player for them. Yeah, I also have the Guardians winning. I got them at 85 and 77. Sorry, I just couldn't read. Uh, I, I, again, love J-Ram. I just think it's a weak division. I think the Guardians overall, just as a team, they are pretty solid. A lot to, lo- a lot to like on the team. Pitching could be better, but, I mean, it's fine. Shane Bieber's probably not going to be a guardian for much longer which is terrible because you know yeah it's terrible for them i i should also note that they are my third place team obviously at 85 uh so yeah not too much to talk about the guardians just they always find a way to somehow sneak in and win it and i just think they'll do it again uh going to the a west now fifth place Surprise, surprise. I'm going to take the Oakland Athletics. Oh, boy. 55-107. That is not my worst team. It is the worst team in the AL, but it's not the worst team. I'll get to that later. (laughs) That, the worst team is in the, you know. uh, I'll probably know in that team. (laughs) Um, I also have the Oakland A's. I have them at 60 and 102 because... I put I put teams at forty losses last year and it bit me. Um I'm being a little optimistic this year with my records. Yeah, this situation's not good. Then you're gonna have the John Fisher wanting to go to Vegas situation overshadowing the team all year. Cause they don't even have a home like stadium next year. They don't even know where they're gonna be playing. I don't even think their lineup's half bad. Like there are pieces in this lineup that I'm like, huh, that's something. Brent Ricker. Oh, wait, that's very interesting. Their uh, second baseman, Zach Eloff. He's something. But then the, you also have the lows. It's the, the lows for me are like, ooh, that is a triple yeah. player. And that is no way to spin it. They got J.D. Davis. J.D. Davis is a good hitter. But the lows are low. And that rotation. And you, also have to, huh. you also have to think, too. Come deadline time, like there's no guarantee the Rutgers going to be there all year. There's no guarantees Davis if he has a good year is going to be there all year. JT Davis is gone. <laughs> yes, um, I think Langoliers can take a step up. I think Solar Storm is going to take a step up, but overall that rotation's bad. That bullpen's bad, and outside of like three positions or four positions, that lineup's not great. Um, and in fourth place, I have the Angels at seventy-one and ninety-one. Now I joke about the Angels. Me and Lamar have a bet on the Angels if they make the playoffs somehow. Overall, that team's just not good. You have Anthony Rendon, who actively doesn't want to play baseball as your starting third baseman. Outside of Trout and Ohapi and um, Neto, well, they have that first baseman too. Outside of that, though, they're not great. There's rumors of them overspending for Snell, even though I think, honestly, they should just go ahead and trade Trout and tear it down. Not going to be a great year for the Angels this year. Absolutely not. Uh, For my fourth place, shocker, shocker to the Angels, 70 at 82. Yeah, this team is tough, man. I think at this point, we should be just memorializing Mike Trout because. I feel like it, we're kind of losing the vision here uh, of how great he is. I don't want people to forget that, you know? Uh, it's annoying, but whatever. I mean, you have two I, generational talents and never made the playoffs once. Yeah. 
They made the playoffs one. Well, not with Shohei, but uh, Trout's played in one playoff series and they got swept. Yeah, hey, hey, but it, he played. So <laughs> ten years ago, <laughs> ten years ago, hey, right. but he played. <laughs> I don't know what he's, he's complaining about. <laughs> Uh, for my third place, I have the Seattle Mariners. They are actually my sixth seed in the wild card. I've got them, or the third wild card team, sixth seed overall. Got them at 87 and 75. Love this team. It's a great team. Uh, they almost made the playoffs last year after having a tough start. And I think that really showed towards the end what they actually are made of. They are a really good team. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, obviously. Gets the most praise from this team, but the rotation, fantastic. They've got an excellent catcher, excellent infield. The team's really, really good, and I think they'll make the playoffs. Um, I also have the Mariners at third. I have them just missing out in the playoffs at 89-73. I just – last year they struggled to hit the beginning of the year, and yes, they picked it up towards the end, but like I don't think they've done enough – to add on to that team, personally. And you have to remember, they also s- kind of sold at the deadline last year, too, which is kind of weird. Because um, people forget them, the Astros, and the Rangers were, like, in the three. One of them was missing the playoffs, and they traded Seawall. Mm. So they were in a weird spot. I don't think they did enough to add on. So I don't I have them as a third-place team missing the playoffs. And my first wildcard team, I have the Houston Astros at 98-64. and 64. Altuve's really good. Bregman's really good. No one talks about Kyle Tucker enough, I feel. One of the most underrated play, if not the most underrated player in the MLB. Jordan's Jordan. They could sign Blake Snell. That was reported today. Um, that rotation's not as strong as it... Well, it wasn't as strong last year because a lot of people had down years. I don't think that will repeat. That bullpen probably need to add a piece or two there, but I have him as my first wildcard team. Yeah, I've also got the Astros in second, 91-71 for me. Uh, I I have is- I have issues with the rotation. There's a lot of injuries there. And I think going with Justin Verlander is one of your key pieces. I just don't like at all. Uh, I do think they'll sign Blake Snow. Uh, I think that is something that's going to happen. The bullpen isn't an issue because I think they could just find guys at like the deadline if they need to. Uh, and then of course this freaking lineup is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, nothing, that's nothing. You can't really say much about the Astros. that hasn't already been said over the years for them being so great. It's, they are just absolutely phenomenal. And that's how they've always been pretty much. Uh, in my first place team, or not always, but, but you know, recently, since like 17, my first place team, first place overall in the American League is Rangers at 160. Uh, yeah, Rangers are good. I think they're going to also sign the other free agent, Jordan Montgomery. Uh, have a little reunion there. It worked last time. Why not try it again? Uh, that's, I do have questions about the rotation, but if they sign Jordan Montgomery, those questions would not be asked as much. Um, yeah, this team's, yeah, this seems good. They won the World Series for a reason. Uh, and I think they're going to win the West and overall have the best record in the American League. Uh, I also have the Rangers 101 and 61. They'll be my two seed because I have the Orioles winning 105. Um, yeah, this team is stacked. Probably do need to add a piece in that rotation considering... It's not – they lost Montgomery, but it's all – if Boris will go down on the price because price is probably outrageous right now. That lineup, though, and you have to think, too, Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford are going to be up at some point. Mm-hmm. Or one's already up. They're both going to be up at some point. They're going to be tough to beat. Repeat champs – or champs for a reason. Okay, where are we all to now? Awards? Or are we doing NL? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which division? East. Okay. Um, 
kind of surprise here for me. I have the Miami Marlins finishing fifth at 68 and 94. I don't know why they fired the GM. Don't know why they got rid of Soleil because it was their only source of power. They won a lot of one run games last year. I don't think they're going to be as lucky this year. And that's kind of a big drop off from a playoff team of 68 wins. I just, Alcantara's out for the year. And was it Perez was getting looked at today? Yeah, Yuri Perez. I just, I don't think they have enough to even be 500 at this point. They didn't do enough. All right, my fifth place is the Washington Nationals, and this is my worst team overall in the MLB. I've got them at 52 and 114, and there are so many issues that I have with this team. They they offend me, and I don't say that a lot about a team, but when I look at this Nationals team, I get offended. Their center fielder, they are going to run. Eddie Rosario out in center field. Take a minute to comprehend that. Eddie Rosario. They are running out Joe Gallo at first base. Jesse Winker in left. Uh, Nick Tenzel. They've still got Victor Robles. They might. Who knows what they're going to do with that. They're now going with the old don't, don't care how hard you throw ball for little method. This team is destined to suck. And I mean suck. I know I love C.J. C- J. Abrams. I think C.J. and Cabot Ruiz are very good players. And Lane Thomas, too. I also think Lane Thomas has a one-way ticket out of Washington right now. He's heading straight to the trade block. But there is nothing, and I mean nothing else about this team that makes me go, wow, they're going to be great. I think the pitching is going to be some of the worst that we have seen. It's not even going to be their starter's fault. And especially in a division that is so good at hitting. And I mean so good at hitting. The Marlins are the weakest lineup, and they don't even have a bad lineup. Of course, the Braves and the Phillies, and then even the Mets have some good parts that they can put into there. And you're going to say, I don't care how hard you throw ball for I know I keep saying that, but I... It's a big deal to kind of say that because that is a very little lead thing to say. I know you're trying to cut down Watts, but I'd rather Watts somebody than allow a big homer. <laughs> it's just philosophy. Gosh. Fourth place. I've got the Mets at 75 and 87. Same record they had last year. I know. It's the same thing's going to happen. I think they're going to not be good, and I think they're going to make trades at the deadline, including trading Pete Alonso. Uh... That's my big thing there. They've got um, okay, they, four. they spend oh, a lot ahead. of money, but they spend a lot of money. Rotations are right outside of Sanga. I mean, Sanga is Sanga is good. Outside of that, the rotation sucks. Lineups are right. Third base will be an issue. Sonny Marte is probably going to start like three games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fourth place. I do have the Nationals at 70 and 92. Now, I understand why you think they're going to be that bad. I offended me. Uh, <laughs> I honestly thought you were going to put the Rockies lower than that. No, and then have no I did not. <laughs> um, my big thing for the Nationals, I think Mackenzie Gorge is I agree. I think they're going to do great. I think Abrams, Ruiz, Thomas are still going to be pretty good. My big thing is I think they're going to call up they're bigger names, and that gives them some sort of a spark, like Dylan Cruz, those type people. That's why I feel they're going to go get to 70 wins, because the young players step up. I forgot to now, mention, I, I also think uh, Mike Rizzo and whoever the coach is going to get fired. Mike Rizzo doesn't look great, because he had that one year <laughs> past that. It's been well, it was five years great. ago. That's true. Only five years ago. Uh, my third place team is the New York Mets going 80 and 82. I actually disagree with the Peter Alonso thing. I think Steve Cohen's too hard headed and wants to resign him so that he doesn't trade him. I feel like Steve's ego is going to get in the way of some of the things they should do. But overall, the lineup itself isn't bad. If Sanga's out there, Sanga's actually a really good starter um, when he comes back. They're a third-place team. 
not going to be yep. too great going to be around 500. Um, I am excited to see Frank Grant's though, especially if they start off hot and they collapse. That's going to be really funny. But yeah. Uh, third place for me, I got the Marlins in 1882. It really depends on what happens with this rotation. Yuri Perez is now getting his elbow checked out. That's scary for them. Uh, yeah, this team's uh, interesting <laughs> at best. Um, rotate, I mean, line up something. They lost Jorge Soler, which is a big power part of their lineup. I don't think Luis Arias is going to bat 400, shockingly. Uh, he had an MVP talks, just, dog. <laughs> yeah, he had Hall of Fame talks, dog. Uh, <laughs> which was one-sided. It came from one source, and let's not listen to that source ever again. Uh, second place, I've got the Phillies at 95 and 67. The Phillies team is made to make the wild card every single year and do really good every single year. That's just the truth. That's just how we have to accept it. And as Braves fans, it hurts my heart because I don't want to play them anymore in the freaking playoffs. Please stop that. Uh, the lineup's really good. The pitching's really good. Everything's really good. But it's not great in the regular season. It's just really good. And then it turns out to be great in the postseason. <laughs> Let's see. I also have the Phillies. I have them as our first wild card at 92 and 70. Oh, yeah. I kind of lowered first wild card their win. Too. I kind of lowered their win. A bunch of my wild card, their win rates are kind of lower. Um, honestly speaking, some of the teams in NL, even like the, there's not really like that many bad teams in NL this year. If you look at it all together, there's a lot of mid teams, but like no true bad team outside of two in mine. Um, like you said, they're not a great. They don't start years out great. Um, I still think they're a playoff team. They're too good not to be. Honestly speaking, though, this team has like two or three good years before everyone starts getting old and their contracts are horrible. Oh, so yeah. I think they need to capitalize on that because some of those deals are whew. great. Um, that rotation, though, Ranger Suarez, I feel, doesn't get enough appreciation for how good he is in that rotation. Great posters Absolutely. in picture, too. Um, I hate him. I oh, yeah, me too. Um, but. First place at NL East, I got the Braves. This isn't part of this is me being a homer, but overall, I mean, I have them at 101 and 61. They're just World Series are bust. That's true about the team every year for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. They're too good not to win it. Absolutely. Uh, and I also have the Braves in first. I've got 102 and 60. I've got them. Or one of sorry, one of four and fifty six. I've got them second place in the National League. Uh oh, yeah. I also have them second. Okay. It's World Series or bust. It's always World Series or bust. It's always World Series or bust for them and the first place team. And it always will be until the end of time when these two finally stop losing and thinking in LDS. Uh <laughs> yeah, a lot to love about this team. Added Chris Sale and I mean only so many teams can add Chris Sale as the fourth starter. And just be like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, in our central, I've got the Brewers at 77 and 85. Uh, I think this Brewers giant is finally going to die. Uh, <laughs> they, they've gotten rid of everyone, and I think they're going to – they've gotten rid of the big one in Corbett Burns, and I think they're going to keep on chopping. Uh, I think everyone that you think is on a contract or you know it's on a contract that might not be around forever – Bye bye. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. And to do that and be seventy seven and eighty five is pretty good. It's because they have a really good farm system. They have really good rookies. They've got guys that can you know fill those holes, and I think that's going to really work out for them. I see uh, fifth place out of the Pirates of seventy eight ninety two. Um, I just outside of Cabrian Hayes, there's a few pieces, but I just I don't see a lot with the team. I don't see a lot in that rotation. Don't get me started about that bullpen either. Um. I do think some of the young guys will step up. Overall, this division, it's not as bad as the AL Central, but still not the best. And I just feel the Pirates. Low bar. Yeah, it's a very low bar. But I feel 70 wins to the Pirates, honestly, would be a success considering how the past few years have gone. Um, my fourth place team, I have the Brewers at 75 and 87. Okay, I remember if Corbin Burns got traded. I forgot they were the team to trade him. If you want to be 100% honest, looking like at the standings <laughs> from last year. Um, so their That's win fair. total is probably over what it should be. 
but they do have some nice young pieces. I do think Adams is going to be traded out of there. Um, Freddie Peralta is one of the most underrated starters in the MLB. I feel dude's consistently pretty good, but no one really recognizes it because Burns is in that rotation. Um, don't know if he's going to be there the full year because I think they will trade some of these pieces at the deadline. But overall, still not a bad team once they call the young guys up and everyone's gone. My fourth place is the St. Louis Cardinals at 88. I hate the Cardinals. I hate everything about them. Miles McCullough is the worst person to ever exist. And I mean that with all my heart. Uh, this team's trash. They signed one good pitcher in Tony Gray, and they signed five bad ones, and I can't even name them all. Lance Lynn was there, though. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what they're doing. They're just getting golden. Miles McCullough complained about spending money in the MLB. He's a player that's making nearly $18 million. And you're just going to complain about a team that's going to spend money? Maybe talk about to your team, who has the sixth, fifth the richest owner in the MLB, and has decided not to spend that much money. I mean, anyone can decide to show here. It's honey. It's not like, oh, no. Well, we'll try our hardest. But the big bad Dodgers are so good. That's a you problem, champ. They're making seven hundred million dollars, but that doesn't make them seven hundred million dollars more better than you. Or maybe it does. Maybe it's because the Cardinals are so bad because you are their ace and you, at best, are a fourth best pitcher on a contending team. It's terrible. Paul Goldschmidt is going to be. Uh, I think he's going to take a little lump. I think Nolan Arenado is going to get better though. Uh, Jordan Walker is good. I like Jordan Walker. Uh, that's about it. Ali Marmol got extended, and I think he's going to get fired, so that's crazy. Uh, it's absolutely ran down into the ground. Absolutely terrible, just like the city of St. Louis. For number three, I've got the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of young boys in here. And let me tell you, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're young. And I think that's what's really going to hurt them in the end. They don't really have that veteran leadership that Joey Votto provided. I really wish they would have kept Joey Votto. Uh, there's always this, like, this next year mentality, and I think that's going to, what, they need to really focus on. They aren't going to win the World Series this year, and that's tough to get to them because, you know, they are really high up, but that, that's just something they got to understand. Um, okay, my third place team, I have the St. Louis Cardinals at 81 and 81. I I hate the Cardinals at 2019 series against the Braves. Um, don't hate them oh, as much her. as you do. That's her. <laughs> I forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think I do hate Miles Michaelis because it's Michaelis. <sighs> oh, I'm not even gonna respect him and send up to say his name right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I started to hate him after there was an incident when you played the Braves a few years ago about like it was something stupid. There's then, always an incident with that loser. <laughs> um, he very Sorry. weak for throwing at the in half last year. I thought that was stupid. Then he talked trash when he went back near his dugout, so he couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That was weak. Overall, though, this Arenado and Goldschmidt—they're not what they once was. Arenado's numbers outside of course haven't really been great either for his standard. Um, and that pitching rotation outside of Sony Gray is is not good. And that bullpen's eh. Uh, but remember, they claim that the best fans, if you claim that you have the best fans in baseball, you're not the best fans of baseball. I like to say that there's too many Absolutely. respect the game, old school type people in there and I hate it. Preach. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as stated by Lamar, who's gotten into multiple fights with Cardinals fans I on Twitter. fight everyone. <laughs> I know it. Um, See, the thing is, I know a Cardinals fan, and he's really nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, so me too. That's like the weird part. <laughs> <laughs> um, my second place team, though, I have the Reds at 84 and 78. I wanted to put them in the playoffs because that meme, the one where they'll beat the Dodgers with like 84 wins in the power of friendship. That's the only reason I thought about doing it, but I couldn't. I think it all boils down to they didn't spend in the offseason, uh, spend more than they probably needed to. Like you said, I thought they should have brought in like a veteran bat, a veteran something on that team. They really don't have. They're too young, in my opinion. Um, would I be shocked if they went won this division? No, because this division is not AL Central bad, but it's still not the strongest. Um, but they did nothing to like move the needle. I feel to put them number one. Another oh, question: Where'd you put the Pirates at? Fifth. What was their record? 
All right, well, I have the Pirates at number or second place at 82 and 80. Uh, and I have them as my third and final wild card team. Now, let me explain for a second. This Please team do. is actually sneakily good. Now, they got Brian Reynolds, Brian Hayes, is absolute great defensive player. O'Neal Cruz is who Ellie De La Cruz inspires to be every single year. Uh, the lineup is actually sneakily good. They got a really good farm system, and I think once they call up in my, I think what's going to happen is about mid-summer, maybe July, August, they're going to call up Livy Dunn's boyfriend, uh, and she's, or he's going to, <laughs> false games if you don't know. He had a really good card in the show 23, so I just, I also put a bet that I think the Pirates are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. So I've got a ride or die here. Uh, I don't bet on stuff I don't believe on, so you know, well, I guess we're here. Uh, it's not a money bet either, it's a bet between us two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it also was money. <laughs> I have no more money. That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Play sub. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> and for first place, I have the Chicago Cubs. They have the third place uh, division winner. So, you know. Uh, 95 and 77. They're just better than everyone. <laughs> That's no other way to put it. They are just flat out a better team than everyone else. I need to add up the 162 minus. Okay, yeah, I got that right. I also have the Cubs at 94 and 68. Um, like you said, that that rotation's more complete. That lines more complete than the Reds. They're as the a good mix of like young guys and like guys who've been in the MLB a little while, which I feel is important. Um, Craig Council, really good manager, brought in. Don't. Absolutely. I don't agree with firing David Ross, but I mean, if you're going to replace him, replace him with one of the best. I feel. Yeah. Um. Overall, I think I think they'll run away with this division by ten plus games. They're too good not to. I feel, and they're also my third place team. Um. Moving on to the NL West, my last place team of the Colorado Rockies at sixty and one hundred two. Um. Get Nolan Jones off this team, please. They're bad. They're run horribly. Their their future's not even that bright either. If you look at like their prospects or like their farm system, just trade Nolan Jones, please. What do you have on that? Sixty one and one hundred one. Uh, sixty and one hundred two. No, I have sixty one and one hundred one. Uh, I I don't know if Nolan Jones is that good. Uh, I I know he did better last year. Like he was a good hitter. I don't know how much of that was a cause effect, but all of a sudden everybody treated him like he was royalty for some reason. Uh, Chris Bryant's on this team. And for fourth place, I got the San Francisco Giants uh, at 80 and 82. They signed Matt Chapman, and I really don't know why. Uh, they had a very e-money deal at J.D. Davis, where it wasn't having to pay him so much, and he actually did pretty good last year. I thought he should have been a all-star, or their all-star. No, Logan Webb was the all-star. Uh... I thought he was a sneaky candidate to make it, but pay hey, whatever. Sign the big guy. That's the Giants' whole reasoning. They do this every single year, and it's not going to work out. Shocker. <laughs> um, fourth, I also have the Giants at seventy six and eighty six. I their rotation's decent. I just I don't know if they have enough in that lineup to. Got away. Well, that Jorge, I don't understand that Chapman deal either. If you want to be 100% honest, I mean, Boris kind of overplayed his hand in all these free agents, and now they're settling for like, it's what? He can opt out every year. What? Uh, who? Chapman. I don't think so. Or is it an option? He has an option. It's only, like, I think he has it's an not. Option. Yeah, I just this team isn't good enough, I feel, to compete in this division. Um, moving on to my third place team though, and my last wildcard team. I have the San Diego Padres going eight eight eighty eight and seventy four. Um they get Tatis back for the whole season, which I think is huge. Um Machado's back, like Kim's back. Um they traded for Dylan Cease. I feel if Cease could go back to his twenty one form or twenty two yeah, twenty two form. And Musgrove can 
get back to somewhat what he was. That's a good one two punch in that rotation. Darvish isn't a bad three. Um, that lineup's still pretty decent. It's just if pitching can perform, I think they'll get back to the playoffs. Oh, <laughs> I also have the Padres 81 81. I think they're missing the playoffs, though. Oh, I don't understand why they traded for Dylan Cease. But hey, whatever. They wanted to cut the payroll. So I guess trade some prospects while you're at it. Uh, obviously, they <laughs> traded Juan Soto in the off season. That certainly something. They gave up their future for that. Uh, they're moving Hasi on Kim to short, and they're going to move Bogarts to second. Cool. Uh, just I don't see a lot from this team. Just a lot of like what could have been, just not what actually is. Uh, fifth place, the second wild card, fifth overall. I've got the Diamondbacks at 92 and 70. Uh, love this team. Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, absolutely great one two punch. Especially in the playoffs. The lineup is really good. Uh, the catcher, uh, Gabriel Manera, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Patel Marte, Corbin Beck, Carroll, uh, Christian Walker, all fantastic. They signed Eduardo Rodriguez too in the offseason. That's a great move. Uh, yeah, like the team. Um, yeah, I also have the Diamondbacks as my second wild card, finishing 90 and 72. Like you said, the lineup's good, the rotation. I don't, once it gets to that fourth and fifth spot in the rotation, I do think they can improve there somewhere at the deadline. Um, because honestly speaking, that was kind of their downfall in the World Series was that start in rotation. Um, but overall, they're a good team. I think they'll get back. I love the them signing Jock Peterson to fill that DH role. Um, yeah, they're still going to be really good. But first place, though, my number one seed in the NL, it's the LA Dodgers. Um, now, I do think people are overstating this is, like, one of the best teams we've ever seen this season because I do record. feel that bottom. What? What record? Uh, 104 and 58. Um, I do gotcha. think people are – that lineup's very top-heavy. I do think that bottom ha- half, you can – improve there somewhere but overall they're still gonna be a really good team i feel like they can beat up on the bottom of this division easy um yeah that rotation i do that rotation is overrated in my opinion because i don't think glass now is as good as people say they're going to be we've seen a history of when pitchers come over to the u.s there's that struggle so i don't think yamamoto is going to be that side on canada they think he's going to be in year one but overall, I still think they're the best team in this division. And I think they'll finish with the best record in the NL. And I agree. I got the Dodgers finishing first tier, first overall, 105-57. Uh, like the points, but I do think – I don't think there's as much holes at the bottom of the lineup as you think. Uh, Freddie, Mookie, uh, Shohei is a 1-2-3. It's absolutely nasty. Uh, they really want to keep Gavin Lutz in this team. Sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to hold them against it. Teoscar Hernandez is added. James Outman. Uh, I think Hayward might still be in the lineup. I'm not really sure. I can't think right now. Still got Monty. Still got Will. Yeah. It's a good team. Rotation. It is a little overrated, but, you know, it's just hype over Yamamoto. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to be really good. But that leads us straight into the playoffs. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to go over our wild card, ALDS, ALCS, or AL wild card, ALDS, ALCS, and then NL wild card, NLDS, NLCS. I'll go ahead and start with both wild card games. Yankees and Astros is how it's mine lines up. I think it's going to be Yankees in three. And then Guardians Mariners, I think it's going to be Guardians in three. Okay, so I have Guardians Yankees. I have Yankees in two in that one. And I have Astros and Rays. I think the Astros went into. All right, that leads us into the ALDS. Mine lines up as the Yankees and Rangers. I've actually got the Yankees in five. And then Guardians, Orioles. I've got Orioles in four. Okay, I have Orioles, Yankees. I have the Orioles in four. Then I have Rangers, Astros, Rangers in five. And then that leads in the Yankees Orioles. I think it's going to be the story going into this is it's a division battle all year where the Orioles barely snuck out, but this is the place where the Yankees are actually going to capitalize. I think Garrett Cole's going to be back back here. 
Yankees are going to win in six and head to the World Series. Uh, I got the Orioles beating the Rangers in seven. Um, yeah, this kind of scares me because the Orioles kind of feel like the 20. Let's see, Braves won the division 18, right? For mm-hmm. the first time. Yeah, this is kind of feels like the 2019 Braves where like they were one of the best teams all year. They had so much height and they get bounced in the first round. That kind of plays an effect of the Orioles with me, but uh, I'm going to the World Series. All right, why don't you lead us in the National League? Okay, so I have the Cubs and Padres playing in the wild card. I have the Padres in three. Then I have the Phillies and Diamondbacks going up against each other again. again and I have the Phillies in three. Yeah, I've got Phillies Diamondbacks as well. I got the Phillies one in three, and then Cubs Pirates. I've got the Cubs in two. Okay, so in the DS, that means I have the Dodgers Padres. I have the Dodgers in four. Finally, get over that hump. I do think the Padres though will be that team that gets hot at the end, and those always plays always goes horribly for the Dodgers. But um, I also have Braves Phillies matching up again in the DS, and I think this is the year Braves in five. I've got the Phillies and the Dodgers matching up against each other. And I've got the Dodgers, sorry, sweeping the Phillies. And then I've got the Braves, (laughs) Cubs meeting each other. And I've got the Braves sweeping the Cubs. Okay, so I have Dodgers, Braves. Um, I have the Braves in six. I was tempted to do Braves in five for Freddie, but I'm not a man to react out of spite. Um. (laughs) I just think the Braves rotation is more proven than the Dodgers rotation at this point. So the Braves in six. Yeah, I think, again, this my CSs are all story-driven. This is the matchup that everyone wants in the playoffs. And I I mean everyone. Every, this is the Braves versus Dodgers. Dodgers get Otani. That's a big deal uh, because with Otani there, you now have the top five MVP uh candidates from last year because Shohei won the AL. The top four was Acuna, Mookie, Freddie, and Matt. Uh, and these two teams are considered two of the do- most dominant teams in the MLB. Uh, finally meeting again in the NLCS as a repeat of 2021. And I think actually the Braves went again and I've got them taking it in seven. So that's kind of where the sweep comes. Like they dominate the DS. They just absolutely show up. And it's just a big battle of Goliaths, you know. I will say, though, a Braves Philly CS would be a lot of fun. Yeah, but I don't want it. Uh, I don't want to play the Phillies again. <laughs> I don't want to play. Philly scares me. Uh, so, yeah, that leads to the World Series. My World Series is the Braves Orioles. What is yours? Braves. No, no, yours is Braves Orioles. Mine's Braves Yankees. <laughs> Sorry. Was yours Braves Orioles, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got Braves in seven. I think Braves-Yankees is actually going to be a really uh, fun series. You've got a lot of things there. Acuna and Soto will obviously be great on the field together. Uh, just history. Really old teams. Maybe the Braves finally win another one. Okay, I have the Orioles in seven. One, because I don't want to sound like a homer. And two, I have bad luck in these posies and things, and I don't want bad luck affecting my team. <laughs> but overall, though, I think this is a very real, realistic World Series matchup. Um, I think these two are going to meet a lot in the World Series in the future because both are so young and so talented that if they don't make it, it's a failure for both of these at this point. Um, like I said, the, the Orioles pick kind of scares me because, you know, the Braves have all that hype the year after they broke out and they got bounced in the first round. But overall, yeah. Braves Orioles would be a fun World Series to watch. Absolutely, yeah. But now we go into actually my favorite part of this whole thing. Awards. I love awards. Uh, I think sometimes the, uh, you can get a little lost in all the numbers and stuff with the standing predictions. Oh, just so you know, throw a dart. Uh, going first, I'm going to start with the NL MVP. We'll just, I'll say my NL MVP, you say yours, and then go AL, and then go back to me, and then we'll do it like that. Right. Uh, NL MVP, I've got Mookie Betts. I think the push this year will be 
for a Mookie MVP. Uh, no reason, just it was a really big push last year. And he's playing shortstop. Hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> you'll never hear the end of that. Uh, <laughs> not for me, not for me. You'll. That's all you're hearing about Mookie playing shortstop for me. But, yeah, I'm, I think he's going to win it. Again, this um, is my wish. Just... <laughs> I so like my though. my NL MVP. I've got Fernando Tatis Jr. People forget he missed a good bit of the year last year, and he still had 25 homers, 78 RBIs, with 29 steals. Um, overall, though, he's still only 25 years old. He's still really good. He's that suspension kind of mess with people's image of him. I think he'll come back this year, have a strong year, and win an MVP. Do the AL. <laughs> oh, uh, my AL MVP. I have Corey Seager, who honestly I'm shocked hasn't won an MVP to this point. Um, up until last year, he was one of those players who I thought was criminally underrated. Um, overall, he's on a really good team though with the Rangers. No Otani in the AL this year, so it's going to open up the chances for oh, a lot yeah. of people. Um, I think Seager's. Oh, you're silent now. Can you hear me? Yeah. You um, said, I think Seager. I think Seager's going to capitalize on Otani this year in an open field. All right. Uh, my AL MVP is Jordan Alvarez. To me, it's a little shocking that Jordan Alvarez is actually number one. He's been so good. And again, no Otani is huge here. Uh, because the AL's been dominated by Otani. Uh, the only seasons he hasn't won it is when Josh hit 63 home runs. And there's still some people thinking, well, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I like Jordan. I think he's going to be great. Especially being on the Astros, going to lead them to the playoffs in a weaker rotation year for them. That leads us into Cy Youngs for my National League. Cy Young, I have got Mister Matt Sumumfried. Ah, uh, and according to a theory that I have that he's just going to win a Cy Young and now price himself in Atlanta, which is a sad theory, but <laughs> it's a theory. Ah, uh, yeah, light Matt's, but he's going to win it and then just leave. Um, he's I also about really Freed. good. He's been injured recently. Yeah, I thought about Freed, but that injury, he's been injured like the last two years. So, was kind of hesitant on that. I got Zach Wheeler winning it for me. Um, He's been one of the most consistent pitchers ever since going to Philly. Um, I think once again, he got that big contract. I think he's going to have a big year. Um, It's going to boil down. Last year, everyone kind of just lost it. I think it'll be different than that this year. I think he'll just take control and win it. And for my AL Cy Young, I got Corbin Burns. I think him on the Orioles is just a great fit. Did you cut out or is that just it? Oh, that's just it. Okay. Uh, AL Cy Young, I got <laughs> Kevin Gossman. I'm a huge fan of Kevin Gossman, and it hurt me in the soul when he didn't work out for the Atlanta Braves, and now he is great. He is... Absolutely fantastic. I, again, love Kevin Gosselin. I think he's going to be the AL Cy Young. Uh, going on the Rookie of the Years now. In a Rookie of the Year for me, uh, it's Yamamoto. And I don't think we can really do anything about it. Uh, unless Yamamoto is the absolute worst person and commits uh, acts of terrorism, I think he's going to be the you know, Cy Young or in a Rookie of the Year. It's just he's got so much hype. He's got to win at this point. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I got Yamamoto, too. I mean... I see you agree with the terrorism, too. <laughs> I just... If he has a decent year, they'll find a way to give it to him because big name in L.A., they always find a way to do it. Um, I Like I said, I do think people are overrating him as like a Cy Young contender and all that. I think he'll have a decent first year. I do think he'll struggle to start off, but I think he'll figure it out as the year goes on. And for AL Rookie of the Year, I have Evan Carter with the Rangers. The Rangers lineup is stacked. I I think he's going to play a huge part in that this year. Um, did he get caught up? He got caught up some last year. He wasn't considered a rookie. Who? 
Uh, Evan Carter? Yeah, Evan Carter is not considered a rookie. Or he was not considered a rookie last year. Sorry. Yeah, he was he was really good when he played last year. Um, mm-hmm. Getting into his official rookie year and he already has a ring, I mean, he's really good. <laughs> yeah, I also have Evan Carter as my rookie of the year. Had a great playoffs. And yeah, that just looks great. Not a good team. It's going to help him out. Uh, it's almost, I want to throw a little comparison out there. It's like Michael Harris, when he was called, and Spencer Shire for that matter, they were on a good team where they didn't have to, you know, have that overwearing, overwearing, uh, burden on them, where Michael Harris could bat night and be comfortable, and it, that really works out for him. Same thing with, uh, Strider, he came out of the bullpen. Yeah, like, it's great things for them. Uh, managers of the year for the National League. I've got Craig Council of the Chicago Cubs. Uh, I think they're going to give him every single bit of the credit for turning around this <laughs> team. And I mean every single bit. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I got Craig Council too. I mean, they're the only team I have that really made that jump besides the Padres back into the playoffs. I mean, I have them. And they're going to have a better record than the Padres, so I have them giving it to them. In the AL, um, like I said, Kevin, I think Kevin Cash is going to win it, mainly because I have the Rays actually being really good this year. Um, it's going to go boil down to they really don't have any that many big names, but they still find a way to be good. Mm-hmm. For my AL, I have Mr. Stephen Vogt. Oh, <laughs> I love Stephen Vogt just for what he did with the Braves <laughs> because he was a catcher not named Kevin Smith. Oh, uh, absolutely fantastic. Big emphasis on not Kevin Smith. <laughs> not Kevin Smith. Uh, taking over for Terry, I think it's going to be great. I, I have them winning the division, and there's not really anyone else in the American League that stands out. I was like, whoa, that's a manager of the year. So Steven gets it. And that's it. That's everything we've got. Uh, long episode, I know. Uh, but thank you for tuning in for listening give us some of your predictions down low hey, we need to talk about the big thing what big thing antonio brown being blocked by joe biden <laughs> don't go on antonio brown's twitter yeah, do uh, not go on. <laughs> oh, well, check out our streams <laughs> i'm doing it will be the show streams every now and then uh i'm sure zach will be doing them soon uh zach's also i get my refund next week <laughs> we do some zach versus the jets very often. Probably not tonight, though. Uh, yeah, I doubt it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a long episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. Uh, go check some hey, podcast cut platform. some of these up and just put them in shorts. <laughs> yeah. It, that it does make that easier. Uh, go check us out on all podcast platforms wherever you get your podcasts. We will be there. Uh, we've got YouTube, Twitter. You know, I don't use it that much. Uh, TikTok do use a lot, uh, so go check us out there. Uh, nothing else. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let us know what else you would like to see. Uh, thank and yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.